great seeing everyone this afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's a little overwhelming, I'll admit, um, but I'm very excited to um, have a chance to talk with you and share some of my thoughts. Um, about 39 years ago, I called my father to tell him I was leaving Ohio State to take the Stanford coaching job. I wasn't completely honest because I told him I was thinking about taking the Stanford job. He proceeded to tell me that it was an impossible to win at Stanford and the job was a graveyard job. After more about how crazy I was to consider Stanford, I interrupted him to tell him that I had taken the job. He hung up the phone and told my mother she will be unemployed, coming home, living with us in three months. As a young and upcoming coach, I left a great job at, and team at Ohio State to prove something to myself. To win at Stanford with the strict academic requirements is the ultimate challenge. When I met Assistant Dean of Admissions, John Benelm, he told me straight up, Tara, your recruits need to be able to jump through the same academic hoops as other admits. I remember thinking, John, I need recruits who can put it through the hoop. My father was right about one thing. The Stanford job involved digging, but instead of a graveyard job, it has been a gold mine job. My 38 years as the head coach of Stanford University women's basketball team have been nothing short of magical. Stanford is a beautiful place with incredible people. The strength of Stanford is unwavering commitment to excellence. At Stanford, the team, the, at Stanford, the term student athlete isn't an oxymoron. What other basketball coach has Carolyn Bertozzi, a Nobel Prize winning chemist in their locker room for a game? Where else would a star player, Chanae Ogumake, have a former Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, as an advisor? How fortunate are we to have Middle East correspondent Janine Zakaria do directed reading with a player so they could represent their country in summer competition? Who else has world-renowned happiness professor Fred Luskin meet with their team weekly developing mindfulness training? When our team and I needed help with leadership, I turned to the number one business school in the country at Stanford and former Dean of Admissions, Kirsten Moss. She did customized leadership sessions with our team, coaches, and me. The S in Stanford is for special. Thank you to all our great faculty for your brilliance, dedication, and accessibility to our student athletes. I'm proud of the championships we have won and how we have built a great tradition. What brings me the most satisfaction, however, is to see the transformation of the young women on our team, both on and off the court. How about Kiki this season? Off the court, young, unsure women become steady, confident leaders. In the classroom, they've excelled and gone on to be doctors, lawyers, professors, businesswomen, and, and leaders. Just walking into Maples for practice and hearing the balls bouncing and the music playing has brought me great joy. Coaching has never felt like a J-O-B job. I've loved the game of basketball since the third grade when we did three-player weave in gym class. From the beginning, the strategy of basketball intrigued me, but what really attracted me to the game is the importance of teamwork. It is thrilling to be connected and a successful team. As a daughter of two educators, I've enjoyed teaching basketball fundamentals and skills. Basketball is so much more than dribbling, passing, and shooting. Great teams love playing with and for each other. Basketball is the ultimate team sport, and I'm part of a great team. Thank you to my parents, Rita and Dunbar, for their love and support. My parents have always been my role models. My mom would always say to me, you sure move faster on the basketball court than you do in the kitchen. That wasn't hard. My dad told me basketball will never take you anywhere. I sent him postcards from all over the world. As a young girl, I never played on a high school team or had camps or travel basketball. Our college schedule was only eight regular season games. Coaching wasn't a profession for women. I got into coaching by accident. I had taken a year off after graduating from Indiana as a sociology major, and I was planning to go to law school. My sister Marie was on the newly formed high school team. Title IX had just passed. They had lost 99 to 11 the night before. My dad basically made me go help that team. I learned two very important lessons in my first year. First, 
after games, my parents would say, why didn't you play Marie more? Parents see things through a different lens than coaches. Second, I loved my sister, and through my years as a coach, as upset as I might get with a player, I would always come back to, she was someone's sister. Thank you to Marie, my siblings, Nick and Beth. I also want to give a big shout out to my sister Heidi, the head coach at UC San Diego. We talk daily and help each other. I love you, Heidi, and you are the number one coach in the family. Coaching feels like it was my destiny. I watched hours of boys practice from the seventh grade on. At Indiana, I took Coach Bobby Knight's basketball coaching class. I got an A. And watched his practice for three years. While at Ohio State, I got to know the legendary Fred Taylor. Don Munson was my colleague at Idaho. And here at Stanford, I've had the incredible great fortune of becoming friends with the late Pete Newell. Thank you to Andy Geiger for hiring me in 1985 and Bernard Muir for keeping me. One of my greatest supporters isn't here today in person, but he is with us in spirit and we are in his building. Thank you, John Ariaga. Once about 10 years ago, I seriously considered retiring and went to dinner with John. He had heard I was thinking about it and he told me that was a bad idea. I told him I was exhausted. He recommended I take the summer off. His support was critical for me to take the time I needed. No one has cared more about Stanford and Stanford athletics than John. I'm so thankful for the love and support from the entire Ariaga family. Thank you, Joya, John Jr., and Laura. Thank you, to Heller, thank you to Helen and Peter Bing for supporting our team as scholarship donors and financing our trip to Italy. Thank you to Tony and Linda Meyer for your annual barbecue and pool party and attending all of our games. Thank you to Jesse and Mindy Rogers for supporting the Women's Sports Foundation Legacy Fund, Scholarships, and Lifetime Cardinal. Thank you to the late Satsuko Ishiyama and her family, Nelson, Terry, Julia, Patricia, and Margaret for endowing my coaching position. Thank you to all our exceptional donors for your contributions to endowed positions and scholarships. Coming to Stanford wasn't an easy decision for me. I initially said no to Andy Geiger. He asked me why, and I told him, I don't know enough about Stanford. So he said, come back. I actually learned a lot about recruiting from Andy. On my second recruiting trip to campus, I met the track coach, Brooks Johnson. Andy had instructed Brooks to keep walking me around campus until I said yes. We walked and walked, and not only did I say yes to Brooks, but, be, but we became best lifetime, lifelong friends. He is my soulmate. Thank you, Brooks. As I said, I am part of a great team. From the beginning, I've understood the importance of outstanding assistant coaches. I have always had incredible assistants. Thank you to Amy Tucker, who along with Julie Plank and the late June Doherty came with me from Ohio State back in 1985. Amy, I'm so grateful for your confidence in me. Thank you for the sacrifices you made to come to Stanford. Amy called me the first summer to tell me about a great guard. I asked, does she have grades? Amy said, yes, but there's a problem. She's from Tennessee. I said, ooh, that's a problem. But Jennifer Azey came to Stanford and became the first All-American. When I took a year off to coach the Olympic team in 1996, Amy took over as the head coach. She coached the team for an undefeated Pac-12 championship and Final Four. She has the best winning percentage at Stanford. Thank you to Associate Head Coach Kate Pay, I love working with you. Kate is a phenomenal coach. She is knowledgeable, an excellent communicator, and totally invested in Stanford. Thank you to Katie Stedding. I'm so thankful for your loyalty and hard work. Katie was our first player to sign at Stanford. She was a key to our 1990 championship, along with being a member of the 1996 Olympic team. Thank you to Tempe Brown for coming back this season. I appreciate your calm, mature demeanor and how you always would check to make sure I was wearing matching shoes. <laughs> Thank you, Bird. Erica McCall for joining our staff this season after a wonderful pro career. I have enjoyed working with you as much as I enjoyed coaching you. You are the quintessential coach. Thank you to my sport administrator, Heather Owen, our basketball staff, Eileen Roach, Jeanette Poland, Casey Spinetti, Brian Shank, Caitlin Knox, John Cantalupe, and Aaron Poindexter-McCann. 
Working with our coaches and staff has been a highlight of my time at Stanford. I have thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to plan, strategize, argue, lots of my ideas get shot down, and laugh with such great colleagues. Thank you for making work so much fun. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the women's basketball coaches, sorority and fraternity for their friendship and competition. Thank you to the giants of our game who, have, who I have admired, Pat Summit, Jody Conrad, Gino Ariema, Seal Berry, Andy Landers, Muffet McGraw, Nancy Darsh, Kim Mulkey, Lisa Bluter, and Don Staley. I also want to thank the other coaches at Stanford who I've learned from and cheered for. When I first came to Stanford, it was very intimidating to be in the company of people like Dick Gould, 17 NCAA championships, Bill Walsh, Skip Kenny, but in fact, they were welcome, welcoming, helpful, and supportive. Once I was walking into the athletic department following five-time NCAA champion Dante Dedamonte, I thought to myself, if he can do it, I can do it. We did win a couple of championships, and later, in the same spot, I met Sadao Hadama, who had coached the gymnastics team. And I said to Sadao, what got into you winning? He said, Tara, I said to myself, if you can do it, I can do it. Working and learning alongside great coaches and great people like Mike Montgomery, Trent Johnson, Johnny Dawkins, Tyrone Willingham, Jim, who has it better than us, Harbaugh, David Shaw, John Dunning, Mark Marquis, Greg Meehan, Ann Walker, John Tanner, Lily Fruit, just to name a few, has been inspiring. Thank you all for your support and encouragement. Another joy of working at Stanford has been watching and getting to know the accomplished student athletes in other sports. Once during my once during a rainy winter week, a young man asked me if he could putt on the side of the court. You guessed it, Tiger Woods. During the pandemic, I got to swim in a lane between Olympians, Simone Manuel, and Katie Ledecky. Talk about humbling. I've rebounded for Mark Madsen and led Andrew Luck and Christian McCaffrey and the football team onto the field as their guest coach. Most importantly, I wanna thank all all of the women I have coached at Stanford. I admire and respect the dedication that our student athletes have to excellence in the classroom and on the court. As their coach, I have aspired to help each player get to a place they couldn't get on their own. I've wanted to be a coach that I would want to play for. Someone who works very hard to give our team the best chance of being successful, along with a person who demonstrates empathy and compassion. Through the game of basketball, I have taught the importance of teamwork, hard work, discipline, determination, unselfishness, and resilience. I've had many former players tell me the demands of playing basketball helped, have helped them be successful in their careers. Most importantly, I've wanted our team to have fun and be great teammates. Our players have been inspiring and motivating. When I asked the 1990 team members to write down on an index card, what is your contribution to the team? Walk on Angela Taylor, who really got in the game, wrote, spread sunshine. We won the NCAA championship. When I asked Chris McMurdo, an incoming freshman, as we drove onto campus, on campus drive, what are you thinking about? Instead of the expected answer, she said, I want to make a difference in this world. She's a doctor now. When our national team was in Ukraine in January, our bus was leaving for the airport at 3.30 a.m. As we boarded the bus, 12 to 15 women shivering in thin coats were begging. Everyone, included me, including me, walked right by, ignoring them. Not Jennifer. She reached in her pockets and gave them her money and then opened her suitcase and gave away her clothes. Everyone on the bus followed Jennifer. After losing, arguably, the toughest game ever to Old Dominion in 1997, the players were inconsolable. Jamila Weidman commanded the room, pick your heads up. I would rather lose with you than win with anyone else. Later, after a very tough loss to UConn in the national title game, Jane Appel emotionally told me she didn't want to take her uniform off because she knew she would never put it on again. I have so many stories of how the people I have coached have motivated me, influenced, and inspired me. I have learned so much from each player. I'm eternally grateful for having them in my life. I am, incredibly, I am incredibly proud of the Stanford Sisterhood. 
We've had real sisters. Carly could find Bonnie open anywhere on the court. NECA was another coach for Cheney, and Lexi and Lacey competed daily. In tough games, the sisterhood is a key to victory. It was very exciting this season to win three overtime games. I don't think we've ever had three before. And see how hard everyone was playing for each other. Yes, the championship years are on the wall in Maples, but what I see when I look up there is Kiki high-fiving Cam, Jennifer and Sonia leaving the court, arms around each other, Candace hugging me, and NECA embracing Roz. It is the friendships that we have that makes it so special. It has been an honor and a pleasure to be part of these women's lives. My goal has been to be a teacher, mentor, confidant, and eventually a lifetime friend for them. I have grieved at funerals of parents and former players. I have celebrated at weddings. When children are born, I've, called within the, I've been called within the hour, or I talked my way into the hospital to see the mother and newborn. As John Poland said to me when recruiting Jeanette, Tara, we are family. Thank you fans and the Stanford Fast Break Club. Our fans are fantastic. It has been thrilling to see the attendance at our games go from being able to count on my fingers and toes the number of people in the gym to sold out maples. I will be sitting up with you next season cheering for our team. I'm very sad about losing the great Pac-12 conference. Thank you to the outstanding coaches that I have competed against for close to 40 years. Thank you to our conference administrators, conference game officials, and Pac-12 network. Thank you media for your coverage of our teams through the years. What a pleasure it has been to get to know Dwight Chapin, Elliot Allman, Darren Sabeda, Tom Fitzgerald, Ann Killian, Michelle Smith, Scott Osler. It's a big game if all three from the SF Chronicle are here. Marissa Injimi, Joan Ryan, Janie McCauley, Anthony Flores, Cheryl Coward, Michael Roberson, uh, Jason Dumas, Aaron Wilson, Kate Rooney, Vern Glenn, Gary Radnish, Ashley Adamson, and Mary Murphy. Thank you for telling the stories of our games and great players. There's a young girl out there who will watch or read about Stanford women's basketball, and her dad will say to her, basketball will take you everywhere. Questions? <laughs> Thanks, John.